Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight on Y254 News. And tonight we talk about postpartum depression. We try to see what is the cause, what do we do to make sure that when mothers give birth, they don't have to go through a postpartum depression. How do we also bring uh, fathers? Because po uh, apparently postpartum depression affects at least one in 10 men. We also try to see how do partners support uh, their wives during uh, this process? And to help us talk about this topic tonight, we have Geraldine Mwirori, who is the founder of Mommy's Touch, and she's also a social economist. We have Mary Ojoang, who is a patron of WASWA, that is a Women Student Welfare Association. You can be part of our conversation tonight by sharing your views and comments on our social media platforms. That is on Y254 channel, hashtag Y254 News. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. Thank you guys for finding the time to come and join us tonight. And as I was doing my research, um, you find out that at least we, are, we have got to a point whereby people talk, get to talk about postpartum depression. People don't because we have mothers who at some point they have had their children taken away from them because they are not at a good position to really take care of them at that uh, particular moment. But as we start, I would like you, Geraldine, to help give a definition to someone who is watching us tonight and they have no idea. It's their first time that they're hearing about postpartum depression. What is it? Uh, basically, it's depression. But this happens weeks after delivery. This is uh, when, after the mother gives birth, mm -hmm. then it's beyond the baby blues. After the first few weeks, uh, first four weeks you find the mother there's a way you feel about the child but when it goes beyond the baby blues the normal baby blues mm -hmm. uh, some people feel like they really need to take care of this baby it's or they don't understand and some or, or others start experiencing some kind of fear they're afraid that their child maybe will be harmed by other people mm -hmm. they don't want it to be held by someone uh, they feel like the only way to keep this child safe is killing them or or that's one way mm -hmm. or the other way would be the mother feels like they're not parent enough, they are not good for this child, or they don't understand what is happening and they do not want at all mm -hmm. to be associated with a kid, then you realize something is wrong, mm -hmm. something is not right. Mm -hmm. So it, postpartum depression happens, it's the mental uh, illness for moms after delivery, mm -hmm. which can be caused by different things. Okay, yeah. well, we're going to get to the causes of that, but Mary, you're a mom. Did you experience postpartum depression? Uh, Patricia, I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, I have to speak about the depression, it came with a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. First, I am a student mm -hmm. at the university when I was uh, expecting. Mm -hmm. uh, my academic is ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Here is a child. Mm -hmm. I'm a single mom. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine I'm thinking about how this child is going to survive. At the same time, I have to chase my ambition as a young woman mm -hmm. in, in the academia field. So I have this aspect, I have to leave this child behind under the care of my sister to go and proceed with my studies. When I'm leaving this child, I should be breastfeeding her. That comes with the pain of holding the breast back. Mm -hmm. I was through medication, but deep down it was so painful seeing my child is going to mm -hmm. stay behind while I'm moving forward. Mm -hmm. Again, the responsibilities. I don't blame most girls who sometimes they go for giving away their children mm -hmm. because the responsibility that comes with mother motherhood is kind of God-given. Mm -hmm. If you're not strong enough, you can't overcome mm -hmm. it. Okay. So, Geraldine, we've had Mary's experience. Yes. What was your experience? Did you, first of all, have you, did you go through postpartum depression? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. um, mine, I wasn't a student, though. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, at that stage where I haven't figured out who I am, mm -hmm. uh, what career path I'm taking on. Basically, like, I hadn't planned on uh, getting pregnant. And so, I you know people ask, so now in this day and age, how do you even get pregnant? Mm -hmm. There's, post, there's uh, the morning after pill, mm -hmm. there's all that. Those things fail, you <laughs> know, they're not like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like 70%, uh, so there's a whole 30% mm -hmm. or 40% chance. So I found myself pregnant mm -hmm. and I was going through motions. I had not even discovered who I am as a person, what's my path. Like, I think I was going, you know, the way they say uh, 20... 
five to thirty mm -hmm. that period you still discover who yourself, you are yeah. and then now here is a baby mm -hmm. uh, financially I can't even sustain myself and then there's someone you need to take care of so for me it was a uh, it was a period mm -hmm. where and then previously I had gone through depression so now this coupled up with an unplanned pregnancy it was uh, it was depressing okay yeah. so we know everything has a cause everything has a trigger we expect that when you get your when you when you've delivered your baby a baby is supposed to be a bundle of joy that is what we all expect mm. we expect we you don't want to leave <laughs> that cute <laughs> little oh, baby yeah. you want to be with them every other minute but mm. now what exactly do you think causes for you for example what do you think uh, triggered you to get to the point whereby you suffered postpartum depression so basically there are different things that uh, cause postpartum depression now that I have learned more about it and gone through therapy I know sometimes it's hormonal mm -hmm. it's the hormones that cause the post pattern depression mm -hmm. but also there if you have had previous episodes of depression mm -hmm. that can cause you to have postpartum depression but also studies for example by WHO mm -hmm. have shown that poverty is a factor it plays a key role in uh, maternal mental health because you know poverty in this case you know people think of poverty as being no food, no nothing, yeah. but poverty is, you know, financially stable. You do not know what next. So basically, you don't know where your medical bills are going to come from. You don't know what this child is going to feed on. What are you going to clothe them with? All those things coupled up. Will you provide rent? Maybe you'll need help. So their diapers, the other things. For me, um, so it was that previous depression state mm -hmm. now coupled up with all this question of sudden change that i had not really uh, thought about or planned for mm -hmm. so all of it coupled up made me uh, stressed out and then also for me i had a very hard time during delivery mm -hmm. like my labor took too long almost two days and I was tired, I was exhausted, and the pain mm -hmm. caught. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, it was a stressful moment, like, it was a traumatic uh, period for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. to labor for so long, get induced, and then end up in the theater. So, at the end of the day, I ended up more depressed okay. than, than I had even thought about. Okay. Every every story is different and every person's experience with postpartum depression, even when you get to hear of people's stories, it's very different. So Mary, for you, what did you struggle with during that time? What was what was that thing that really put you in that situation that you really found hard to deal with, you really f uh, found really hard to get to heal from it? Okay, first, I didn't get enough support from family mm -hmm. except my sister. Mm -hmm. So accepting the fact that you are in this alone mm -hmm. and the only person holding your hand is my sister. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, I look at this child, she's so innocent. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave her. And you see, I left my baby when she was two weeks old. So detaching from a two weeks old baby whom you are breastfeeding was the toughest thing mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. But it had to happen because I have to chase my academics. Mm -hmm. If I had to defer my studies to breastfeed this child, then it meant no future for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm leaving this child and I have, I'm carrying myself with responsibility. I have to put her on none one mm -hmm. and I'm just a first year student. Mm -hmm. So that meant I'm going to look for a job I don't know where. Mm -hmm. help, my help loan was only 15,000 15, shillings. So immediately I come to campus, I take all the money sent to my sister to put my daughter on milk. Mm -hmm. Now I'm left with nothing to eat. I detached from my friends because I looked horrible. Mm -hmm. Everything was in a mess. I'm out looking for a job. I worked as a sales agent for Persis Insurance. Looking at myself, even if you are a client, and uh, this person comes to you, she's so young, she looks so desperate, and she wants you to ensure with her you won't even trust her. Mm -hmm. So I never got any business. And I kept on pushing on with or without food. And here are classes. So it was a mix of activities and situations for me. Okay. But I accepted it. Mm -hmm. 
then I realized uh, I lost almost all my friends. I was left with one friend mm -hmm. that I could share and tell, you see, I left a baby at home. So as we are talking, I can't concentrate in class mm -hmm. because she needs milk. Mm -hmm. I haven't sent any money so far. Mm -hmm. So th I d concentration completely in classwork. And if you check my grades, my transcript, my grades for that specific time is not as as I started uh, mm -hmm. in the first semester before mm -hmm. I got pre okay. before I got to deliver my child. Mm -hmm. I academically I dropped. Mm -hmm. I picked up in third year after I'm fixing everything now and I'm accepting and moving forward and I'm able even to provide consistently for this child. Okay, so it's very. These are very difficult uh, moments for mothers, especially when we're talking about single mothers who don't have the father to be a support system. But we've had cases whereby these, like postpartum depression gets to affect men, where it's called, I think, paternal, paternal depression or something. But Geraldine, what do you think we can do to make sure that we prepare mothers, that we don't only get excited till the baby shower and then a mother does not know what it is that they're supposed to expect. This is going to affect your sleeping patterns because at times the child is going to be awake. Your body is going to change in certain ways. Maybe you're not going to be comfortable with that. You're probably, you're not going to be as out as you wanted because this baby needs you. So how do you think we could prepare our mothers to make sure that we don't get to, we don't have high numbers of mothers going through postpartum depression? Um, basically, I think the best thing is to talk about it, mm -hmm. to avail information and to hold sessions for mothers, uh, these peer-to-peer -peer support mm -hmm. where mothers are aware, are made aware of what to expect when expecting. It becomes very hard sometimes in hospitals because uh, you find I can tell you, like for me, I started with a public hospital the first time I went for my clinic and the queues are too long that there's no time to start uh, telling the mother, this is what you expect, this is supposed to happen, if you see this and this, no, there's a problem. So for me, what I would say is to avail this information, to continue with advocacy and talking, having conversations around uh, uh, mental health issues mm -hmm. during and after pregnancy okay. and also in hospitals we can make this possible if we had you know I've seen I've seen hospitals have support system for people living with HIV mm -hmm. like yes. they have a day they meet up mm -hmm. they form support groups mm -hmm. I think and it makes work easier as much as you know public hospitals are crowded because mm -hmm. everyone is going there mm -hmm. In even other hospitals, sometimes it's too busy and people are giving birth every now and yeah. then. So it would be, I think it would be good if people would be put in groups, like mm -hmm. they would form support groups. Mm -hmm. And then even if we have limited um, medics, you see if they formed some uh, thing that they do for people living with HIV. Mm -hmm. If they would form groups of mothers, mm -hmm. we would form groups of mothers where this information can be shared mm -hmm. and the mothers can be having their support groups say every week mm -hmm. or every month when mm -hmm. they are coming for their clinic, okay. then they can also meet and the information be shared, mm -hmm. be told this is what to expect. If you see these signs, then no. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're about to go mm -hmm. to depression, seek help. The mm -hmm. same way we have, uh, when, doc, when, when you give birth, every month you go for your child to be checked, mm -hmm. weight, mm -hmm. uh, held immunization. And then if, for example, you found that your child is malnourished, you're sent to a nutritionist mm -hmm. to be informed. Mm -hmm. Could be the same thing. When you're in this support group and you discover you're going through depression, then you can have your group with a therapist, therapist. in the hospital because they are there. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so we cannot we cannot take men out of this because they are also part of it. Um, how do we how do we make sure that we get support? Uh, we are, we are trying to make sure that the father of the child also needs to understand that this mother needs your support in certain ways because the, the men were not gonna wake up when the baby cries. So it's just the mother's uh, load to make sure that they wake up, they feed and all that. So Mary, how do you think for men watching us to, uh, for watch, men watching us tonight that they can also 
play a part in making sure that we get to create awareness on postpartum depression and we also try to create an end to it, making sure that mothers can nurse their babies uh, peacefully without having to struggle with anything. Okay, Patricia, you know, uh, pregnancy is mm -hmm. not a women only affair. Mm -hmm. It is both parties involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those who are married and have uh, partners mm -hmm. who are supportive mm -hmm. or are involved mm -hmm. rather than single moms, mm -hmm. it is important if they start having this conversation even when the woman is expecting. Mm -hmm. And I applaud all men mm -hmm. who stand with their women in the labor wards mm -hmm. because it's really a tough moment that most women mm -hmm. are likely to go into mm -hmm. postpartum de depression. Okay. So if men can stand with these women and make it feel normal, mm -hmm. the delivery process, mm -hmm. let them adopt their children and be with them all the time. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, the government should introduce uh, leave for men mm -hmm. when our, our wife is pregnant and is almost giving birth. Yeah, we Other have countries have mm -hmm. done that. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. have it in Kenya mm -hmm. so that men can support these women in their time mm -hmm. when they need them the most okay. because without support it's really, really tough for women. Mm -hmm. And it's their responsibility actually as a man. Mm -hmm. That is your child as well. Mm -hmm. Don't leave the burden to the woman alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you, the way you love yourself is the way you love your child and mm -hmm. you love the mother. Mm -hmm. Let them put themselves in the shoes of these women and carry the burden okay. and watch over wi of women. We've seen it happen not only in movies. Mm -hmm. In other countries, men are taking care of their children. Yes, they are. Assume this woman dies on delivery. Mm -hmm. Will you leave your child to suffer because you are not the mother? Because you can't breastfeed? Mm -hmm. So it's the responsibility of men to wake up, mm -hmm. support women, mm -hmm. and take care of their children. Okay. They are okay. Uh, Geraldine, I've seen, uh, I follow you on social media, so I see what you get to do with Mommy's Touch. You try to make sure that you're creating, like the mothers have a livelihood. You try to make sure that whatever products these mothers are bringing out, of a market, you sell them and all that. Uh, is there anything that you've tried on postpartum depression and how have you, how has mommy's uh, touch played a part to make sure that with the mothers in the group, you are able to address uh, postpartum depression? Uh, so <coughs> basically what uh, we're working on currently mm -hmm. is uh, making sure through collective action, co mm -hmm. collective action is bringing the mothers together mm -hmm. and so that then they can have the peer-to-peer -peer type mm -hmm. of uh, counseling mm -hmm. and also talking about it mm -hmm. and being there for each other because when you're going through depression, support system is very, very important. important. Uh -huh. And maybe just to add something she said, mm -hmm. is also the fathers can go for the clinic mm -hmm. with their mothers. They will also get to get this information. Mm -hmm. And even them, it's also an experience for them mm -hmm. to they're also experiencing parenthood and all these changes mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. with another a human being over there. Mm -hmm. So they also get to learn. And if they're also going through depression, mm -hmm. then there are avenues, there are therapists mm -hmm. in the hospitals mm -hmm. to work with them. Okay. So what we're doing for us is at Mami Touch is to bring the collect through collective action mm -hmm. to bring about, to enable the future. Mm -hmm. This is uh, through, for example, for us, uh, we've started we studied and seen that poverty is a key factor mm -hmm. when it comes to mental health. Mm -hmm. And so collective action, bring these mothers together, we just don't bring them together to sit about. So mm -hmm. we found activities that are social economically empowering them, okay. boosting their livelihood and income generating activity mm -hmm. so that then they can be able, because um, research has shown that, especially in Kenya, and the rural women, mm -hmm. uh, the cost of maternal and infant death mm -hmm. mortality going so high mm -hmm. is because of one, malnutrition, okay. and two, mm -hmm. poor uptake of healthcare. The healthcare is there, but they can't because of, they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe transport, it's, the, it's not accessible, transport going there. So they need something, an income that then they can be able to go to the health center, they can afford their NHIF cover. Okay. That's why we bring them together to hold each other's hand when, and have the information around how to deal with depression and all that. But at the same time, then they can have income generating activities and savings mm -hmm. that make them, that give them economic freedom. So then okay. they can make 
quality decisions about their health, wealth, and well-being. Okay. Uh, we don't have, uh, we're really running out of time, but I would like, Mary, for you to give uh, a 30 seconds on what do you think the society, that is, by the society we mean, sisters around that mother, the brothers, aunts, and uncles, what do you think they can do to make sure that we bring an end to postpartum depression as we wind up? Okay. Uh, family is the key aspect of a woman's mm -hmm. life. If they can support these uh, young mothers, mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, it's been perceived to be wrong to have a child out of wedlock, mm -hmm. but it's not uh, such a big sin mm -hmm. uh, as not supporting them and letting them in the hands of nobody. Okay. So family should be at the front line mm -hmm. to hold the hands of all young women mm -hmm. and girls, mm -hmm. no matter the mistakes mm -hmm. they've made, mm -hmm. they need your help. Okay. Because if they are not helped, they are going to suffer and mm -hmm. uh, d die out of some issues and th this will really if th they can support the children they, they'll really help reduce these cases of uh, uh, infants being left on the streets and uh, cases of increasing cases of uh, abortions mm -hmm. because if at all my family could support me through thick and thin then they should stand with me even when I'm pregnant until delivery okay. and give me hope constant hope and society to stop judging uh, these women because People sometimes look at uh, expecting women like they only see us, the only people having sex. So it should not be like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, guys, for talking about that. I hope that uh, such conversations um, get to go out there for people to really know what postpartum depression is. What I can say is that if you have someone around you and they have a newborn baby, why don't take even, like, find a day, hold the baby for them, let them even go for a walk, let them try and do maybe some of the activities that they used to enjoy before that baby came, so that we make sure that we are bringing. Um, mothers who can be able to support the child fully. That is all we earn for you tonight on Y254 News. My name is Patricia Morioki. Do have yourselves a very good night.